The Possibilities of Prayer by Ian Downs, Chapter 5 After a comprehensive and cursive view of the possibilities of prayer, as mapped out in what has been said, it is important to descend to particulars, to Bible facts and principles in regard to this great subject. What are the possibilities of prayer as disclosed by divine revelations? The necessity of prayer and its being are coexistent with man. <clears throat> Nature, even before a clear and full revelation, cries out in prayer. Man is, therefore prayer is. God is, therefore prayer is. Prayer is born of the instincts, the needs, and the cravings in the very being of man. The prayer of Solomon at the dedication of the temple is the product of inspired wisdom and piety and gives a lucid and powerful view of prayer in the wideness of its range, the minuteness of its details, and its abounding possibilities and its urgent necessity. How minute and exactly comprehending is this prayer? National and individual blessings are in it, and temporal and spiritual goods are embraced by it. Individual sins, national calamities, sins, sickness, exile, famine, war, pestilence, mildew, drought, insects, damage to crops, whatever affects husbandry, enemies, whatsoever sickness, one's own sore, one's own guilt, one's own sin, one and all are in this prayer, and all are for prayer. For all these evil prayer is the one universal remedy. Pure praying remedies all ills, cures all diseases, relieves all situations, however dire, most calamities, most fearness and despairing. Prayer to God, pure prayer, relieves dire situations because God can relieve when no one else can. Nothing is too hard for God. No cause is hopeless which God undertakes. No case is mortal when Almighty God is the physician. No conditions are despairing which can detour or defy God. Almighty God, hear this prayer of Solomon, and commit himself to undertake, to relieve and to remedy, if real praying be done, despite all adverse and inexorable conditions. He will always relieve, answer, and bless if men will pray from the heart, and if they will give themselves to real, true praying. After Solomon had finished his magnificent, Ill, uh, illimitable, and all comprehending prayer. This is the record of what God said to him. <clears throat> Quote, and the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts that they devour the land, or if I send pestilence among the people, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Now my eyes shall be open, and my ears attentive to the prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever. Unquote. God put no limitation to his ability to say through true prayer. No hopeless conditions, no accumulation of difficulties, and no desperation in dis distant or circumstance can hinder the success of real prayer. The possibilities of prayer are linked to the infinite resuscitude and to the omnipotent power of God. There is nothing too hard for God to do. God is pledged that if we ask, we shall receive. God can hold nothing from faith and prayer. The thing surpasses all my thought, but fearful is my Lord. Through unbelief I stagger not, for God has spoken the word. Faith, mighty faith, the promise sees, and looks to that alone, last at impossibilities, in Christ it shall be done. The many statements of God's word fully set forth the possibilities and far-reaching nature of prayer. How full of pathos. Quote, Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. End quote. Again, and read the cheering words, quote, he, he shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him, unquote. How diversified the range of trouble. How 
almost infinite its extent, how universal and dire its, com its conditions, how despairing its ways, yet the range of prayer is as great as trouble, is as universal as sorrow, as infinite as grief. The prayer can relieve all these evils which come to the children of men. There is no tear which prayer cannot wipe away or dry up. There is no depression of spirits which it cannot relieve and elevate. There is no despair which it cannot dispel. Quote, Call upon me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great things and difficult, which thou knowest not. Unquote. How broad these words of the Lord, how great the promise, how cheering to faith. They really challenge the faith of the saints. Prayer always brings God to our relief, to bless and to aid, and brings marvelous revelations of his power. What impossibilities are there with God? Name them. Nothing, he says, is impossible to the Lord, and all the possibilities in God are in prayer. Samuel, under the judges of Israel, will fully illustrate the possibility and necessity of prayer. He himself was the beneficiary of the greatness of faith and prayer, and a mother who knew what praying meant. Hannah, his mother, was a woman of mark in character and in piety, who was childless. This privation was a so source of worry and, and weakness and grief. She sought unto God for relief and prayed and poured out her soul before the Lord. She continued her praying. In fact, she multiplied her praying to such an extent that to old Eli she seemed to be intoxicated, almost beside herself in the intensity of her supplications. She was specific in her prayers. She wanted a child. For a man-child, she prayed. And God was specific in his answer. A man-child God gave her. A man indeed he became. He was the creation of prayer and grew himself to a man of prayer. He was a mighty intercessor, especially in emergencies in the history of God's people. The epitome of his life and character is found in the statement, quote, Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel, and the Lord heard him, unquote. The victory was complete, and the Ebenezer was the, me the memorial of the possibilities and necessities of prayer. Again, at another time, Samuel called unto the Lord, and thunder and rain came out of season in wheat harvest. Here are some statements concerning this mighty intercessor, who knew how to pray, and whom God always regarded when he prayed. Quote, Samuel cried unto the Lord all night, unquote. Says he at another time in speaking to the Lord's people, quote, Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you, unquote. These great occasions show how this notable ruler of Israel made prayer a habit, and that this was a notable and conspicuous characteristic of his dispensation. Prayer was no stranger, no strange exercise to Samuel. He was accustomed to it. He was in the habit of praying, knew the way of God, and received answers from God. Through him and his praying, God's cause was brought out of its low, depressed condition, and a great national revival began, of which David was one of its fruits. Samuel was one of the notable men of the old dispensation, who stood out prominently as one who had great influence of God in prayer. God could not deny him anything he asked of him. Samuel's praying always affected God and moved God to do what would not have otherwise been done had he not prayed. Samuel stands out as a striking illustration of the possibility of prayer. He shows conclusively the achievements of prayer. Jacob is an illustration for all time of the commanding and conquering forces of prayer. God came to him as an ag agnos agnosis, A-N-T-A-G-O-N-I-S-T. He grappled Jacob and shook him as if he were in the, embra the embrace of a deadly foe. Jacob, the deceiver, subplanner, the wily, unscrupulous traitor, had no eyes to see God. His perverted principles and his deliberate overreaching and wrongdoing had blinded his vision. To reach God, to know God, and to conquer God, that was the demand of this critical hour. God, Jacob was alone and all night, wrestled to the intensity of the struggle, its changing issues and its venturing fortunes, as well as the receding and advancing lines in the conflict. Here was the strength of weakness the power of self-despair, the energy of perseverance, 
the elevation of humility, and the victory of surrender. Jacob's salvation issued from the forces which he massed in that all-night conflict. He prayed and wept and importunate until the fierce, fierce, fishery hate of Esau's heart died and it was softened into love. A greater miracle was wrought on Jacob than on Esau. His name, his character, and his destiny were all changed by that all-night praying. Here is the record of the results of that night's praying struggle. Quote, As a prince has thou power with God and with men and has prevailed, unquote. Quote, By his strength we had power with God, yea, he had power over the angel and prevailed, unquote. What forces lie in importunate prayer? What mighty results are gained by it in one night's struggle and praying? God is affected and changed in attitude, and two men are transformed in character and destiny.